I'm out of words, but I'm definitely not out of wanting to ride this Ripmo. Well, this is a proper beauty. Having it! <laughs> You've got to style it up for the event photographer, haven't you? Woo! It's another wheelbase big demo day. And I'm up at Hampstead Forest on the Ibis Ripmo AF. Affordable, aggro, from one of the iconic brands of early mountain biking in California. And I've got an hour to find out just how well it rides. So, you best join me. So I'm gonna do a super quick static run through on the details so I can concentrate on the riding as soon as I hit the trails. So, alloy frame, 64.9 degree head tube, 475 mil reach on this large, steep seat tube on there, 435 mil rear end. That's despite the fact you've got decent room, you've got 2.5 inch tire there, and it sat on a 35 mil internal rim. Uh, again, another Ibis innovation. So you're running DW link suspension, named after Dave Weagle, and you've got a DVO Jade coilover shock as well. Then up front, you've got a uh, DVO Onyx fork. So you've got 160 mil fork, you've got 146 mil, mil rear travel, and it's 29 at both ends, and it's double Asagai for maximum uh, just sheer rubbery confidence. Then it's what they call the NGX build. So you've got a mixture of NX and GX right through. You've got SRAM G2 brakes with a nice big chunky rotor. And it just looks ready to rip. So that's what I'm gonna do. So while I'm getting the hang of this bike on the first few turns, let's do some Ibis history. Cheers lads. So Scott Nichol, founder of Ibis bikes, still there. One of the original founding fathers of the clunker movement in California. One of the proper early guys and a real disruptor throughout the history of mountain biking. And this Ripmo AF, one of the early affordable alloy agro disruptors as well. So there is a Ripmo in carbon, proper top end bike, but this is purely designed to be rowdy and well, Ripmo has a, as well if you can't work out what that means, then you're probably too polite to make the most of it anyway. And you can feel that coil shock. I mean, to be honest, you could feel how grippy it was just on the way up. But now getting through the jank, little patter bumps on here. It is so supple and controlled, even though it's arguably too heavy a spring weight for my skinny little ass. It just feels awesome. And I've certainly no worries about double acid guy either. Plus, I've always been a big fan of DVO suspension. It's not that common, you see it, but Again, they're the guys who pretty much did all the great stuff at Mazoki back in the glory days. And this fork and shock just speaks to all those classic hard, hardcore, old school rider vibes of maximum fun, minimum downtime. And in fact, you've got Big bolts right through this bike. Again, just designed for maximum pinning, minimum wrenching. And, and this is a blind run. It's been a while since I've ridden this trail, but just feel super confident. Lovely to drive through sections. Yes, oh, it lands beautifully. And then just really poised through that double smaxy spear thrower tire combination. If you're wondering what acid guy actually means, but there's your random fact for the day. Oh right, mate, coming past. Oh, cheers love. And 
good thing about DWing bikes is they always pedal really well too. But you have got a climb switch if you need it anyway. So even in Max Terra, double acid guy isn't necessarily a choice you'd make for a lot of pedaling. And 15.66 kilos without pedals seems relatively high at first glance, but actually it's nearly kilo lighter than bikes like the Focus Jam or the Specialized Evo alloy. And they come with air shocks and narrower rims. So actually, considering the spec, it's actually pretty light in relative terms. And even fully open, just winding up here. Nice and efficiently. They've just got that sense. Serious grip, serious tire footprint when things get techy. And while it's primarily own brand kit in terms of cockpit, etc., it's still, I don't know, is that a gate or a. I don't know if that was a feature or not. It's a feature next time, okay? It's all the right shape and proportion, and you've got 31.8 mil bar, which to be honest, I'm increasingly becoming a fan on, just because it doesn't bludgeon your hands to pieces. So you've still got plenty of grip and tactile information coming back, even on the last run of the day. But, and there is a little bit of chatter through the front end, maybe not as smooth as Lyric of 36 on the real pattern bumps, but then again, I've not properly. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Why is that nice though? I'm not properly tuned this, I've just set basic sag, and also I think the fact the rear end is so smooth, I think makes it quite hard at for the forks to follow. And again, while it's not the most slammed bike I've ridden, still no trouble getting it over. And again, plenty of support from that DW link. So pop in and playing really nicely, deliberately taking those wider lines. <laughs> no, I yeah, am honest. I'm not just getting thrown wide because I don't know where I'm going. But above all, it's just a bike that clearly loves to hustle. So as you can see, it's a bit gravelly here today, but in Asti guys are always a win in terms of confidence. But having them both ends and on those wider rims, which again, a real Ibis innovation. Lemon Synthase. One of the first brands to go with a big hoop. You can really feel it in the ground connection. I think I said that twice, so it must be true. And it's not perhaps the stiffest of alloy bikes I've ridden. There's been some really hench rides I've had recently. Again, bikes like the Focus Jam. But it's just got a lovely flow to it. On trails like this, it just loves hunkering down, getting that proper speed tuck, and just grip, 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 grip. No brakes, just lean. That's it, come on. Milk that speed. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> yes. Got how good these trails were. Woo. And it's a great showcase for a bike like this. Proper flower. <laughs> Bit of slide there. Okay, woo. Coming in. All right, time to be polite. Got a passing maneuver coming up. So just sit down. Ah, oh, just curves through so nicely. Okay, inside line. Thanks very much. Cheers. Right. And then, like I say, you know, those pedals always engaged. That DW link does not leave you wallowing or hanging in any way. 
but then really controlled and smooth lets you take encourages you to take the rough and rowdy line just to prove why coil shocks are the choice of real pinners compared to air shocks <laughs> ah and while the mainframe feel is pretty smooth you can really feel those super short DW linkages when you get the bike properly cranked over it's just a proper ripper it really is <laughs> okay so obviously super quick rundown but you know you've got excited about bike when you have to uh, wipe spit off the uh, lens of your chest cam so apologies about that if there was some distortion on the filming but yeah what a ripper this ripmo is uh, just i mean particularly that back end i need to definitely need to do a bit more work on the fork that's no surprise, DVO have always had a bit of a Venn diagram going on in terms of uh, setting them up. I mean, the Onyx, to be fair, is easier to set up than uh, the older forks, but yeah, proper good time bike. Everything hanging together really, really well. I mean, the fact, I was just going to say, I don't know what the brakes are like because barely used them. It's just a bike that encourages you to properly just chuck yourself flat into turns, grind those bars, just make the most of those. Uh, should I say it again? Yeah, make the most of those really wide uh, rims those big old Astigai tires proper pinner plus something really distinctively different you don't see a lot of ibises i, I buy i don't know what's the plural of an ibis i mean the fact i don't know shows they're quite a rare beast i guess but definitely deserves to see more of them out there so big initial thumbs up from me in terms of sheer rideability and playfulness but also just the inherent kind of maximum ride time minimum servicing faff of all those big bolts proven design dvo suspension ticking lots of boxes for people who just want to get out there and shred so big thanks to the ibis demo crew for lending me this and setting me up uh, massive thanks to uh, wheelbase cycles for inviting me to the demo day uh, to hit up some of the bikes here and uh, big thanks to Zero Cycling for clothing and kit channel support, PEs and crud products as well. And as always, massive thanks to my Patreon supporters who pledge a very small amount on a monthly basis, but it makes a big difference in how sustainable this channel is. And they get exclusive early extended and behind the scenes edits as a thank you. So if you really like what I'm doing, jump on Patreon and drop me a small amount every month to grow the channel. But if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you click that button. Click for notifications so you know when the next bikes are coming up. I know I'm penciled in for a Trek Fuel EX and a uh, nuke-proof megawatt, but I'm also going to try and get on a Mondraker Super Foxy today as well. But that's all coming up. For now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV, riding the Ibis Ritmo AF. <laughs>